Welcome to sunny Portugal and welcome to the new GSX S1000 GX. Now this is a, a new bike from Suzuki for 2024. It's based on the GT version with that 1000cc K5 motor, but on the GX you have fully electronic suspension. So there's a whole host of acronyms around the suspension to keep the bike level, it's speed dependent, it's got automatic preload in the rear. So it's quite a sophisticated system, but how is that all going to integrate with the motorcycle? Now this Suzuki calling this a crossover. So this is similar to your S1000XRs, your Kawasaki Versus is all your Tracer 9. So a bike based with sort of adventure bike ergonomics and sort of road bike GT machine road holding and characteristics with 17 inch front wheel, you know, decent brakes. Think of it as a super bike on stilts. But the question is, how's it gonna handle these beautiful Portuguese roads? What's it gonna be like? How's that suspension gonna stack up? These are all questions I have. So if you're interested in the answers, stick around. Stay tuned and drop Z, roll the intro. about quarter to eight in the morning we've got all of the bikes behind me we should have it i think we've got a full day's riding today i think we've got about 240 kilometers to cover today so um yeah it should be good should be able to get a real good feel for what the bike is like the suspension on this bike is the big news and it's got a million different acronyms for all of the different features it's got one of the features it's got is equivalent of anti-dive so you know as you go on the brakes it firms up the damping compression damping in the forks you know and gives you extra support on the brakes it's just sort of you can feel that as you go on the brakes that's why i'm just wondering if the brakes are sort of the normal suzuki affair and they feel a little bit different and i think it's because of that suspension but yeah that is that is extremely plush in this mode in the b mode it is extremely plush i mean even hitting these little speed humps there's no need to get out of the seat. That is extremely plush. What will be interesting is to see how firm it goes though. Is it just going to be a big squishy ride or is it going to get firm enough to chuck it around a little bit? Because that's what I'm expecting from this bike. I want a bike which could do everything, you know? And this could, could be a bike that could do everything. Suzuki suspension is normally extremely well set up. And they get it right on the, the, the you know let's call them the lesser models without the electronic suspension sometimes with electronic suspension you can you know introduces a bit of a bit of vagueness you know a bit of vagueness to the feedback and uh, so it's going to be really interesting to see whether this sort of suffers with that vagueness now i mean already i mean it, it's cold it's not that warm these roads taking it steady but, you know, I can feel what the tarmac's doing, which is nice. I've got that sort of feedback from the texture of the road, which you sometimes don't get of electronic stuff. So I'm getting that, which is great. But I'm just sort of dialing into it a little bit. So there's a little bit sort of flatter at the bottom end. You know, it does it doesn't give masses of bottom end drive. It's not bad, but that's second, you know, you'd, you'd have to be in first if you really want to shift. Then you get to the top and then of course it, <laughs> it takes off. But the power delivery is just super smooth. You know, that, that is the thing with this engine. It is super smooth, that power delivery. And really good on vibes as well. It's a surprise actually, much, much less vibes than the, uh, you know, the XR which is probably, I think, this bike's biggest competitor would be the XR. I'm going to put it in A mode. And as you can see, that's gone suspension, hard, traction level two. You know, Anti-wheelie is all built into the traction control. I think there's actually eight levels of traction control, so there's an additional, I think, three levels of traction over what you get on the GT. Because, you know, this bike, it's got a full IMU. I mean, it's only this bike and the Hayabusa which have an IMU in the Suzuki range. So the GT doesn't have an IMU. 
So this the IMU on this bike really, you know, obviously it provides additional safety around the, the cornering ABS and cornering traction control, which this has got. But the IMU also dictates a lot of the settings, you know, for the suspension as well. So based on, so you've got speed dependent damping on this as well. So the faster you go, the ride will automatically firm up. Whereas if you're going slower, it will be a little bit softer. Um, and obviously other, other inputs related to speed, which is adjusting the suspension. If you hit a rear, if you're going slowly over really uneven surfaces, it will go into like a equivalent of the uh, Ducati Skyhook, where the bike sort of feels like it's being suspended in the middle, and you know, keep, it's being kept level by by the suspension. You know, it, it monitors the, <laughs> the road surface a thousand times a second. You know, all of this stuff. So we've just stopped to do our first uh, sort of tracking shots and photos up and down this bit of road. As you can see, we've got the full contingency of Japanese engineers along for this one as well. They've just had a look at my bike because I've had it set in the hard mode, obviously, because we're going to, you know, tracking it around a little bit up this twisty bit for the photos. And they've actually gone into the user setting and added extra support on top of the hard so you've not just got soft medium hard there's soft medium hard plus plus and minus three so i've gone into the hard plus it up three and it's actually you know a lot more support um and when you're on the brakes especially you know you can feel the front resisting fork dive you know because the suspension is actually i think it's 25 mil more travel on this than there is on the gt so i think the GT is 125 mm travel front and rear, and I think this is 150 mm travel front and rear, if I've got my numbers right, my facts right. But um, yeah, it's. I was a little bit disappointed it wasn't that sporty on the suspension, but now I've plussed on some extra. It, it is gone, you know, it's gone sporty enough, but I need to ride the bike a bit more yet to, to come to a proper conclusion on that. But yeah, I'm enjoying it. We've had specific instructions and no wheelies, no stoppies, no burnouts. Stick to the speed limits. Whether they're just saying that, I think we're about to find out. <laughs> the power delivery from the engine is a little bit, yeah, you know, it's it's very smooth. It's you know, it's really not very aggressive at all at the bottom end. You know, I'd like perhaps a little bit more pull. You know, in a higher gear if, if you want to get a real wriggle on you know you got you got to keep the keep the engine spinning a little bit that would be like a, you know a slight criticism you know I'd want a little bit more of what I meant but hey you've still got 150 horsepower at the top it's still enough there you know leave it in a lower gear if you really want to head off what's standing out to me is the seat comfort is very very good very comfortable seating position on this the bar position is nice you, you're quite upright you're a little bit more upright on this than the gt i think the pegs feel to me exactly the same i may have to jump on the gt in a minute just to to see if there's any difference in the leg position they feel a little a little bit high you know certainly higher than like uh, the v-strong you know and the, the point for me of this bike is to bring you sort of an adventure bike comfort but in a package whereby it's, it's more sporty but I would say the fit the leg ergonomics when I mean, I'm 6'2 it doesn't feel any more roomy in the leg I don't think than the GT version which is a little bit of a shame you know you've got more leg room I would say on the uh, on the V-Strom so that would be a slight criticism I'd like a little bit more leg position a little bit lower pegs a little bit lower down or perhaps for me the seat to be a little bit higher up but overall the position is extremely comfortable and i love the seat the seat is really nice nice and wide as well as thick which i think a lot of manufacturers fall for not making their seats wide enough to support people with larger more ample bottoms what setting is that camera on it's in photo mode mate not video uh, uh, I'm not sure I can from here. Hang on. There we go. There we go. There we are. Technical issues there from Rossi. 
if anyone knows him, you won't be surprised. Heard someone skidding there, and there's no squids or wheelies. Didn't you get the memo? So the panniers are extra for the buy. I think they're about 1100 quid for the panniers. So they're not cheap. They're pretty, they're a good size though. They're a decent size. They don't come with any liners, but they are a decent size. Size, obviously color-coded as well. I think they're exactly the same pannier as is on the GT model, but apparently there could be one more little spacer you need, which differs between them. So it's a shame it doesn't come with panniers, but I guess 15 and a half, or say 15.6, or guess or something like that, with the panniers fitted, isn't too bad. Look at that bad boy. Vintage. <laughs> Seems like they've got the same roadwork set up as they do in the UK. Two people working, five watching. Right, let's have a little play with the mode. Let's just go into B mode. And that's put the suspension in medium. I mean, there, there's a definite change between the settings. I, I can tell that that is now a little bit softer just from the way it, you know, it's responding to the bumps in the road. That is a little bit softer. I can still feel the texture of the tarmac, which is good. You need, you know, as I mentioned, you do sometimes lose that tarmac feel with electronic suspension. And we have still got that feel, which is nice. 110 kilometers an hour, what's that sort of 65, coming up to 70, just under 5,000 revs. Getting a little bit of buzz at that speed. Pretty minimal though. Pretty minimal, but a little tiny little bit of buzz in the bars. I mean, that, that straight falls for you. Perfectly acceptable, that's not intrusive. That's, I'd say, less of a buzz than the BMW XR, for those wanting a comparison. So the air is about here, so it's not a massively high screen. And I'm getting a little bit sort of halfway up my helmet, but my, 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 my chest area, my shoulders are out of that wind. It doesn't feel heavy and cumbersome. It's got a really nice, sort of quite nimble feel to the handling. Sort of, but I know it's 230 kilos, but you know, it it doesn't feel heavier than that. It feels anything a little bit lighter than that. You know, it's got a nice, nice turning. So my, my only sort of slight criticisms from this bike being absolutely, you know, 10 out of 10, is this just a little bit flat you know, a little bit flat at the bottom, that, that, that power response, even in the A mode. But, you know, that's just this platform. They're all a little bit like that. I mean, this is Suzuki's first attempt at electronic suspension. And it's, it's very good that they've achieved a lot more than a lot of manufacturers have, you know, after many attempts at electronic suspension. You know, it has made the bike more stable it's made it smoother you know it's given you that ability to to easily go hard to soft you know i mean just having it on the modes or just flicking around one thing suzuki do you know they make it a very easy bike to drive you know you just got one jog wheel and an okay button and a back button you know, super super easy super intuitive so fourth pull 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 now you've got to bang it down, and which is quite good, you know, you got up and down through the box, a bit of engagement. Yeah, it's not a bike where you just leave it in a higher gear and, um, and it will pull you through, you know, you've got to work the gearbox, you've got to use the gears. <laughs> it's all part of the fun, isn't it? So just done our second video back and forth, beautiful scenic area, not sure these roads are ideally suited for this bike, but hey ho, we're on the way to lunch now, on the way to lunch and I feel like I haven't really ridden the bike yet, if you know what I mean, I'm, I like it, but I think it almost renders the GT pointless. It's like, I don't know why you'd buy the GT over this version. Obviously the GT is a bit cheaper because it hasn't got electronic suspension, but I think I'd rather pay the extra for this model, you know, with the electronic suspension. So it's almost like, why buy the GT now? This is sort of the rep almost a replacement for me to the GT. Because even though this is a, a crossover, it's not like an adventure bike. We, you, you know, you can't stand up. On like an adventure bike, you can stand up and relax. You know, you can ride along stood up, can't you? You know, just to rest your bum and stuff. The bars are a bit low for that, or the pegs are a bit high. 
you're sort of crouched over a bit so you can't sort of ride along stood up on it really which for me is what sort of a crossover bike you should be able to do you know there's adventure bike ergonomics but in a sporty package it's not it's sort of not quite a crossover it's more of a gt bike i think certainly with like the the, the leg position where it's a little bit so we're cramped but you'd expect a little bit more you, you certainly got more leg position on the beast drum you know on an adventure bike so it's almost rendered the gt you know sort of pointless in my view i mean i don't know why they took you know took us down a route like this if we're on the beast drum you know with, with, a, with a sort of 50 50 tire this would this would be fine for that sort of bike not quite sure this is the best showing the best of the bike you know on these sorts of roads if i'm honest this would be good for the uh <laughs> new hypermotard launch not so sure they're the best sorts of roads for these bikes but it does show actually <laughs> they're pretty agile you know you can flip and flop them down these little lanes and you know it feels absolutely fine i've got the suspension fully hard and it, it's sort of comfortably hard you know it doesn't feel it doesn't feel that rigid the bike it doesn't feel too bad but it doesn't feel massively rigid you know there's quite a bit of compliance in it still i think you could still you could still get a lick on you can still push it around i wouldn't say from memory it's as sporty as sporty a ride as the xr i think it's definitely a bit more comfortable than that i'm wondering maybe if the gt would be a little bit a little bit firmer a little bit better for sort of you know more of this sort of twisty stuff i don't know perhaps we need to do a comparison really with, with this gx and the gt to see to see what the main differences are between these bikes you know because for me they definitely seem to be doing the same sort of thing yeah this this is more like it isn't it this is what we wanted oh it's over now suzuki do mechanically suzuki make really good bikes which always just work and are really easy to ride and this is no different you know super slick uh, that gearbox actually feels slicker on this than it does when i've ridden like, ridden like the s1000 it just it is super slick on this mid down it's really really nice that gearbox and quick shifter blipper setup look at that plenty of big surfing uh, community i think in portugal there's quite a few surf spots i mean that looks pretty good doesn't it for there's oh, someone people surfing there now though. oh look at that should have bought my wetsuit and the board so as part of this video i'm going to do a few little uh, interviews and we've got the legendary michael knees here you've you've got god in the motorcycling <laughs> <laughs> world and then you've got Michael Lee's right below very Blimey. close to him right below him so uh, introduction introduction for you how you find it Mike well first it's only early days you only had early half days. a day on it how are you finding it um I think it does everything Suzuki set out for it to do you know it's comfortable you can imagine that on a long trip it would be nice and it's got the the range of suspension adjustment that lets it be comfortable or sporty um yeah. When we were first riding it this morning, before the tyres had warmed up and before we were up to speed, it kind of lacks a bit of refinement and fluidity really on the throttle and the, the tyres and the suspension. But it sort of seems to work better when you, you've got a little bit more moment, momentum, a bit more speed, a uh, bit more heat in the tyre. Yeah. And um, we've been playing around with the settings. It kind of works best with a little bit more re preload so it can load the front. But you know, I know from experience that these tyres are pretty basic and I think yeah. if you put some new generation sports touring tyres Something nice it, and sticky on it, it would yeah, make a world of difference on it. It would make a world of difference and you know, just a bit of a, a racier shape. It's quite a flat profile yeah. rear, 50 profile rear. Um, you know, we've ridden the GT a lot and it's a great bike, but the, the same kind of, not problems, but character is in this bike. So. You kind of feel like you need an extra gear, you need a seventh gear. Do, do you think this almost makes the GT redundant now? I mean, why would you buy the GT yeah, exactly. really when you can because buy it's not, by this? It's, it's not, not that much more expensive, is and it? And it's not mega tall either, no. so shorter riders should still yeah. be able to get their feet down. Yeah. I think it's a nicer looking bike than the Definitely. GT. And nice, And it's really nicely finished. The colours are nice. Um, whether it's going to be as good as a Tracer or an S1000XR, that's, uh, I'm not sure. 
That remains and to be seen, doesn't it? Lacks a little bit of refinement, but it's a good bike. I think if you live with it, you'd be perfectly happy with it. But I think, yeah, the brakes are a bit wooden. The tyres could be a little bit better. The throttle's a little bit snatchy in A mode and not enough in B. So just needs a bit more riding to get used to it, really. But it's, it's a nice bike. I like it. Brilliant. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate it. I'm in the wrong game here. I should be testing surfboards because that out there <laughs> looks absolutely brilliant. Oh, where's my bathers? So we've had a little bit of lunch, a bit of luncheon, nice bit of uh, steak Diane, chips, rice, plenty of flies, <laughs> not fries, flies, <laughs> flies everywhere. I think they must have all migrated from the UK and they've come to Portugal for their, for their winter holidays. But um, yeah, it was a nice lunch, beautiful location on the beach there, absolutely fantastic. Now we're basically heading to another little uh, photo stop, you know, a bit more guffage with photos. Tomorrow's going to be the main day to ride this bike. Today is a little bit of riding, lots of guffage. But now, hopefully we've got these twisty roads heading from the beach back to the hotel. I think we've got about an hour's ride or so. So I'm hoping it'll be something a little bit more little bigger roads to stretch the bike's legs a little bit. I've not even had it past 7,000 revs. I've, I've not even opened it up properly yet and I've been riding it. It's two o'clock in the afternoon, not opened it up yet. Because we've not been on sort of suitable roads. So I'm hoping we're going to now sort that out. It's a shame it doesn't have a little bit more drive. I know there's a lot of criticism about the A mode. I found it fine. I found the A mode fine. You've just got to be very precise with your throttle, you know. I guess I'm just used to riding more snatchy bikes. I like a, an aggressive feeling motorcycle, so that, that doesn't bother me. But I could say, you know, all the other people are picking up on it, that they find it a bit too aggressive. I think it's all right. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's a good bike. It's not, you know, it's not perhaps as, as exciting as it could have been. You know, it's, it's a little bit soft. It's sporty, don't get me wrong, it's sporty, and like I say, I'm holding out that we're going to get on something really twisty and chuck it down, lay it right over, you know, be able to hang off it, get your knee down on it. I don't think the tyres help. These OE Bridgestones are quite a flat profile on them. This is something Michael mentioned, and he's absolutely correct. There's quite a flat profile on these Bridgestone tyres. I think something a bit more sticky would probably transform the, the way it turns into corners a bit. It's pretty good. It feels pretty, pretty edge. I mean, it feels like a pretty lightweight bike, you know? You don't feel like you're carrying a lot of weight that you do when you go on like V-Stroms and all, you know, all the more, more sporty machines. <laughs> this is getting spicy. You know, it turns in nice. I think you know, a decent set of Pirelli rubber on it, you know, would, would probably transform the thing, to be honest. But so I'm going to shut up because it looks like finally we're getting to something a little bit more spicy. And I suspect you do not want to go over that edge there. Woo! Wheels out, that's the first time we've actually uh, opened it up. It's got a lot of to go. Yeah, it handles pretty well. I mean, try and, try and, you know, ride like this <laughs> on a V-Strom. But it's just as it turns in, and oh, we're back here, I think it's just a little tiny little bit of vagueness. It could be the tyres. Could be the tyres. It could just be me, a bit rusty. Like that, that, forgot about that speed bump, <laughs> no problem. It's gotcha, it has gotcha. Another one, soaks it up. What I do like is the support you get under braking. I think the front's nice. When you go on the brakes, it's got, you know, you've got a good feeding from the road from the front end. It's really comfortable, as I said a million times, comfort, comfort, comfort. Now, this electronic suspension is bringing comfort to the party, you know. Feels very plush, very premium, that suspension. And the brakes are definitely better than the, the usual Suzuki Affair 
That could be because of the clever anti-dive which is happening up front. You know, you, you can get a, a, a rig along. I suppose when you've got it boiling like this and you're going on and off the throttle at sort of mid revs, I guess you can feel a tiny little bit of snatchiness in the uh, in that A mode in, in that situation. Maybe I'll try going to B, but if I go to B, it's going to soften the suspension up, and I want to keep it firm for this. <laughs> that was good fun. That's more like it. That's what we wanted. That's more suitable for this machine. So it's day two. We had a day of riding yesterday. Oh, this is impressive. Look at this. It's like the Golden Gate Bridge. But it's in Portugal. I'm enjoying it. I think, um, you know, it's got a Pokemotus. It's not too shabby. GT. GX. We stopped to look at Jesus Christ. There he is. Not my joke, I pinched that. <laughs> but it's taken two days at least to understand the bike. Yeah, yeah, A, to understand all the electronics. Bridges. Green one. We've seen them all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, <laughs> indeed. <laughs>